Module 3 covers Republic Act No. 544, also known as Civil Engineering Law. Welcome again to the program. After the Second World War, when the country gained its independence in 1946, the administration started working on the Philippine Constitution, one of which is the act to regulate the practice of civil engineering in the Philippines, which was approved on June 17, 1950, under the presidency of the late Elpidio R. Quirino. The Republic Act covered the board members for the profession, the board examination for the license system, and the registration of civil engineers. Six years after, on June 16, 1956, Republic Act No. 1582 has been approved and this is an act to repeal and replace Section 24 of Republic Act No. 544 entitled An Act to Regulate the Practice of Civil Engineering in the Philippines. The part of Section 24 of RA 544, which has been modified, is as follows. From the excerpt, it has limited firm partnership, corporation, or association engaging the practice of civil engineering in the country as under the supervision of civil engineer. RA 1582 has the section revised as stated that firm, partnership, corporation, or association may be registered under licensed civil engineers or architects. It also stipulated that civil engineers shall render work in their competence, and same is true for the architects. More than half a century after the birth of RA 544, under the dedication of Senator Panfilo M. Laxon Sr., Senate Bill No. 2770 was approved as an act professionalizing the practice of civil engineering in the Philippines, repealing for this purpose Republic Act No. 544 or RA No. 544 as amended, and for other purposes. From the bill, RA 544 has been entitled Civil Engineering Law of 2011. As written in his explanatory note, whereas before the civil engineer was confined to the application of technical knowledge and skills in the successful implementation and completion of projects, the civil engineer is now confronted with a broader range of issues to deal with. The civil engineer now has to face the challenges of integrating the socio-economic and environmental issues with the technical aspects of the construction projects. The civil engineer is constantly challenged to design and build development in a manner that is environmentally sound, socially acceptable, and globally competitive. The first objective of RA 544 is to attune the law to the needs for national development. In the likes of the current situation, RA 544 is a good instrument to guide the civil engineers to be instigators of nation building. By development, the professional should balance human welfare and sustainability in the environment. The second objective states to strengthen the profession and enable the civil engineers to cope with the formidable challenges brought about by globalization and cross-border practice. It is one of the goals that civil engineers in the Philippines can work at par with the foreign professionals. With RA 544, the civil engineers are confident that their work and craftsmanship are also within the international standards and they can practice their profession anywhere in the world. The third objective, to continually upgrade the level of competence of the civil engineers through peer recognition of specialization in civil engineering, continuing professional development, and strengthening the accredited professional organization of civil engineers. Objective four, to determine more clearly the practice of civil engineering in the Philippines by foreign nationals. With the Republic Act, the practice of foreign civil engineers have been given some limitations and exemptions, requirements, and qualifications. The fifth objective focuses to promote the growth of the consulting sector 
by making it cognizant of the international philosophy of multidisciplinary consultancy services. As described in Module 2, consultancy as a part of the profession should also be enhanced and be standardized with international standards. The sixth objective discusses to remove a provision that makes contracting of multidisciplinary consultancy services unnecessarily difficult, complicated, and impracticable, and which now adversely affects the infrastructure of the government to the extent that work and payment to contracted parties on projects are suspended. By making consultancy services simple and clear, transactions and processes for projects in the development of the country will be faster and more stable. The last objective, to make the law better serve and safeguard public interest by establishing a clear, precise, and practicable delineation of professional and corporate contractual accountability in the civil engineering practice. With the Republic Act, the accountability and obligations of contractors will be clear and easily understandable to have all the best interests of the parties. Article 1 of RA 544 is the title of the Act and definition of terms. This Act shall be known as the Civil Engineering Law of 2011. As used in this Act, the following terms shall be defined as follows. Civil Engineering is the science or profession in which knowledge of the mathematical and physical sciences gained by study and practice is applied with judgment to utilize natural and man-made resources and forces in the planning, design, management, construction, and maintenance of buildings, structures, facilities, and utilities in their totality for the progressive well-being and use of mankind, enhancing the environment, community living, industry, and transportation, taking into consideration such aspects as functionality, efficiency, economy, safety, and environmental quality. Civil engineer, as used in this Act, shall mean a person duly registered with the Board of Civil Engineering in the manner as herein after provided. General practice of civil engineering within the meaning and intent of this Act shall embrace services such as, but not limited to, consultation, planning, design, preparation, signing, sealing of plans, specifications, estimates, erection, installation, demolition, and supervision of construction or demolition of civil engineering structures and facilities, including their components, sites, and environs such as, but not limited to, streets, bridges, highways and railroads, airports and hangars, port works, canals, river and shore improvements, lighthouses and dry docks, buildings, towers, signboards, billboards, chimneys, silos, containment structures and solid waste disposal sites, fixed structures for irrigation, flood protection, drainage, water supply and sewerage works and tunnels. The enumeration of any work in this section shall not be construed as excluding any other work requiring civil engineering knowledge and application. Scope of the practice of civil engineering encompasses the provision of professional services in connection with services of civil engineering structures and facilities and may include, but are not limited to first, technical, economic and financial feasibility studies, project promotional services, planning and designing. Second, pre-designed services such as, but not limited to, consultation, consultancy, giving written advice and directions, evaluations, surveys, investigations, quantity surveys, appraisals and adjustments, environmental impact assessment and studies, schematic design and design development. Third, preparation, signing, sealing of plans, specifications, calculations, bill of materials, cost estimates, tender documents, invitation for bids or proposals, instructions to bidders or offerers, general conditions, special conditions, and contract documents. Fourth, construction and project management, giving general management administration, supervision, coordination, and responsible direction of the planning, designing, construction, reconstruction, erection, alteration, conversion, enlargement, or demolition, 
renovation of civil engineering structures and facilities, including other components, sites, and environs intended for private or public use. Fifth, planning, layouting, and utilization of spaces within and surrounding such civil engineering structures and facilities, including their sites, interiors, spaces, utility systems, equipment, and fixtures. Sixth, programming, administration, construction, arbitration, conservation, and restoration. All works which relate to the scientific and orderly coordination of all works and branches of the work, systems, and processes necessary for the production of complete civil engineering structures and facilities, whether for public or private use, in order to enhance and safeguard life, health, and property and the promotion and enrichment of the quality of life. And lastly, all other works, projects and activities which require the professional competence of a civil engineer, including teaching of professional civil engineering subjects and civil engineering computer-aided design and computer-aided mapping. The term board is used in this act shall mean the Board of Civil Engineering. The third term commission, as used in this act, shall mean the Professional Regulation Commission of the Philippines. The term accredited professional organization of civil engineers, as used in this act, shall mean the Philippine Institute of Civil Engineers or PICE, which is the official national organization of all registered civil engineers in the Philippines, as accredited by the Professional Regulation Commission. The term specialist, as used in this act, shall mean a registered civil engineer who is certified by the PICE to have demonstrated his advanced knowledge, experience, education, and training in a recognized specialization of civil engineering, and who is the recipient of a certificate of specialization set forth in Section 24 of this act. The term specialty organization of civil engineering, or SOCE, as used in this act shall mean the organization of PICE certified specialists in the specialization of civil engineering. The SOCE shall be recognized by the PICE and shall be given a status as an affiliate organization of the PICE. Civil Engineer of Record is the civil engineer registered under this act and qualified under the implementing rules and regulations hereof who is the signatory and sealer to the plans and building permits, specifications, calculations, and others that form part of the contract documents for a project or component of a project, and who is therefore professionally responsible and liable for the design of the project or component of that project. Civil engineer in charge of construction is the civil engineer registered under this act and qualified under the implementing rules and regulations hereof. He is the signatory and sealer to the building permit of a project or component of a project and who is therefore professionally responsible and liable for the construction management and supervision of the project or component of that project. Civil engineer prime professional is the civil engineer registered under this act and qualified under the implementing rules and regulations hereof, who is responsible for the overall integration, coordination, and successful conduct of all the processes who is engaged in the project from inception to completion. Continuing Professional Development, or CPD, refers to a sustaining and progressive learning process that maintains, enhances, or increases the knowledge and continuing ability of civil engineers.